For a long time, we used large pieces of cardboard to create the wave of air, and we still do, but they can be unwieldy. Now we'd like to start people off with empty breakfast cereal boxes. Cereal boxes are big enough to make a good wave, lightweight and sturdy enough for very good control. It's even a good place to store and transport your glider. What follows are specific tips from older video using cardboard, but the tips still apply when using boxes. Just about every beginner flies the glider below the top of the cardboard. Although you can make it fly if you run fast enough, half the wave is passing over the glider, not helping lift it. A good way to get a feel for surfing high is to intentionally go too fast and make the glider blow right over the top. Then just slow down a little bit from that, just short of going over. If you flatten out the cardboard angle, you will not deflect as much air. So there's not much of a wave to surf on. Again, you can fly, but you'll have to run fast to make up for the small wave. At first it seems like the glider turns capriciously, but actually you can turn it with a slight turn of the cardboard to sort of hurt it in the right direction. It's easier to get the hang of this in a wide open space like a gym. Oh, nice. It's not just air vents. If you fly near your friends, you'll get bumped out of the air by their wake of turbulence. Oh, I feel turbulent! Oh, no! After a while, these delicate single layer paper creations get bumped around enough that they're impossible to adjust anymore. Once you've made one or two, you'll be able to churn them out in only five minutes each. Here's the fast checklist, no explanations. Tape a recycled pattern to phone book paper in four places. Cut straight across the back, even though that part of the pattern is cut off now. Fine cut just outside the pattern, and remember to cut to points at the corners so that the pattern stays on. With creases already in the pattern, folding's easy, no drawing needed. Apply pressure evenly in the back with a straight edge. Don't forget the stabilizers. If you can find very thin utility wire, like 26 gauge, you can save time by not having to strip the twisty. Bend the front again to crease the tape. Don't forget to flatten in a book. After a while, you'll be able to estimate the 20 degree angles just by looking at them. <laughs> 